You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Off the Record. I'm your host, Taken Flight, and with me today is the Flying Dutchman. We're going to be discussing this year's drone wars. As DJI hasn't put out a lot of new drones this year, and a lot of American competitors stepping up to the game, what are we expected to see in 2020? That's our discussion for today on Off the Record. Well, Flying Dutchman, welcome to the show. I know this is a new concept that we're trying to do, but I'm really excited about it. Yeah, same here. I think it's awesome to be able to discuss this in a uh, looser format than we do with the new shows. And I think there's a lot of things we can talk about and kind of figure out what we might be expecting next year. Yeah, so we're going to give this little segment a shot, see how it does, see if you guys, you listeners out there like it. If you do like it, please uh, let us know. Leave us a review. Leave us a comment. Email us, support at thedroneu.com. Let us know what you think, because what we're really trying to do is discuss issues that really are not discussed elsewhere. And uh, it's kind of outside the format of Ask Drone You, and that's okay, because uh, we still have this beautiful platform. We can launch a show if we want to, but we want to give it a shot. We want to see what it's like. So, you know, we're talking about drone wars. You know, this has been quite the year of drone wars because with the issue at the end of last year and the $150 million uh, fraud case with DJI, it really left open this whole hole of, of drones. And, you know, we really didn't get any new drones this year, nothing crazy exciting. And it opened up this hole for other manufacturers to come in and produce in a fantastic drone. Well, meanwhile, Donald Trump, excuse me, President Trump, uh, you know, enacts all these new tariffs. We could be seeing even more tariffs here in December. We'll see what happens with that. And that's having a negative impact on DJI's ability to sell drones as well. So this gap seems to be ever widening for an American manufacturer to step up and produce a DJI competitor. And it looks like, uh, Mr. Flying Dutchman, that that has finally happened. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we knew, of course, that Skydio was already working on a uh, successor to the original Skydio R1 that was launched, I believe, early 2018. So we knew something was coming. But um, yeah, you couldn't find a better time, I think, for an American drone company to launch a new product now that DJI is so much under fire because of that fraud case, uh, the trade wars, and of course, the data security concerns that they've been uh, plagued by. So to see an American company, and not just any American company, but Skydio, the one that uh, came up with that autonomously flying and uh, self-flying drone, if you will. I mean, we flew it a bunch of times and I was incredibly impressed already back then. This is a second generation. I haven't had it in my hands yet, but just based on the video footage that you guys can see here as well, it seems like an amazing drone. And uh, of course, there's always things that you can nitpick about and spec improvements that you would like to see or different camera that you would want on this drone. But I think they've made the right choice making a drone that's smaller, lighter, more affordable, and has this amazing self-flying capability. So, I mean, there's a lot of things to, to really unpack with what you just oh. said, too, because the, the fact that it can fly 36 miles an hour autonomously with obstacle avoidance when we're used to 10, 12, 15 miles an hour, that's almost a 200 percent increase. But also, I think you mentioned a very important point. You know, a lot of people are, are, are complaining, they're whining, you know, and it, we got an industry full of whiners. Let's be real, you know. So one of the, the things is why would Skydio launch a 12 megapixel camera on this fantastic drone? drone. And, you know, I will say just based off the report that they launched, I'm really excited about the color gamut. I'm really excited about the dynamic range. We've never seen this many steps of dynamic range on such a small sensor. So it should be interesting. But a lot of people are really wondering, why did Skydio, you know, launch this particular drone? And I think it's important today to discuss this might actually be part of their plan. This might be part of their strategy. We don't know. Uh, have we been talking to Skydio? Well, we want to become, you know, close friends with Skydio, but we haven't talked to them about this particularly. So don't think that any of the information that we're discussing here has actually come from Skydio, um, you know, itself, but mm-hmm. rather it's more of our speculative nature and making uh, decisions based off of things that we've seen. So let me ask you the question, Haya. Do you think Skydio launching this particular drone was the right move? Or do you think that maybe they should have launched uh, a 20 megapixel drone, a drone with a... 
you know, with a global shutter. What do you, what do you think? I'm, I'm pretty sure they could have. Uh, I don't think they should have done that. I think what they've done now with the Skydio 2 is probably the perfect balance of, of uh, specs and capabilities that you want in a drone at a price point where you know you can compete with DJI. Because if, if I was going to be Skydio, you would, you would assume that DJI is going to be very aggressive towards you. So if they can't catch you on specs, they're going to attack you on price probably. Now, DJI also, of course, has the ability to produce many drones quickly. So it, it's a strong competitor. And if you're a Skydio, you might be well funded but you're still a relatively young and small company starting out with now your second generation drone expectations are really high you want to prove yourself to your customers you want to prove yourself also to your investors i think it's smart that they launched a drone that pretty much sticks all the boxes for for any drone enthusiast um, but they're able to deliver it at a very very low price point and therefore reach a large potential market this puts them in a position to actually build up a business show that they're a viable and legitimate company and they can always work on another skydio drone with a one inch sensor they can always include a mechanical shutter if you need to i mean they if, if they make a success out of the skydio 2 i think pretty much all options are open for them to come up with a better drone still uh, uh, more expensive, but then with much, much better uh, camera specs and, uh, than this one has. Um, so, yeah, I think they're doing the right thing with this one. So are you saying that the, the Skydio is almost like a lost leader to say that, like, mm. they're going to launch this drone with a smaller camera, uh, smaller capabilities, see how the market responds as a whole, and then kind of use that excitement and the sale of the Skydio 2 to kind of ramp up in production to offer a more robust um drone that can do more than just videography and photography, mm -hmm. but can also be used with like third party integration. Now that being said, the Skydio 2 does work with drone deploy. Yeah. So I'm interested to see that. You know, I haven't talked to Pix40, haven't talked to a couple of the other friends in mapping um, to discuss this particular drone, but drone deploy has really, really stepped out in front mm -hmm. in working with Skydio. And, you know, I have to say in our, in our mapping classes, we've been teaching about utilizing uh, drone deploy for volumetric measurements, but I think that a lot of large enterprise clients are seeing the value and scalability with drone deploy yeah. too, and, and being able to essentially create free flight missions and orbital missions, save those missions and use them later for employees and delegate them out to different apps and whatnot. Um, now, while I still think that the best point cloud creation is with PIX4D, I'm starting to think that the best ortho mosaic um, production is with drone deploy. Now, with this, I believe it's a linear rolling shutter camera on the Skydio 2. It should be very interesting to see exactly how this works with drone deploy. But going back to you know what we were talking about, do you think that this Skydio 2 is a ramp up into a bigger, better drone? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Skydio, I mean, of course, they're going after the consumer market and they have basically a, an action camera that flies itself and you can do all the crazy stunts on your mountain bike, your snowboard with skis, whatever you want. And this drone is going to follow you and get that amazing footage. However, uh, we also know that Skydio is not just going after the consumer drone market because they've been reaching out to first responders. We know that the uh, fire department in New York, they already got one of the Skydio drones as one of the first people in the country, basically, trying these drones out. So if they're going after the commercial drone market and they're going after first responders, you know that the next question is going to be, hey, I want uh, the Skydio 2 with a thermal camera, or I need a bigger sensor, or I need a strobe, or I need a... I mean, there's, there's a lot of things that... Um, the commercial drone users are going to ask for just like we've seen with uh, DJI. I mean, they, they also got similar questions and what happened? They launched a DJI Enterprise version, they launched a government edition, they launched a Jewel with an uh, infrared camera. So I would expect that Skydio is already anticipating similar questions uh, for their drones and yeah, I would not be surprised at all if they come out with a uh, Enterprise version, if you will, or a Skydio 2 that has a thermal camera or something like that. Yeah. So, you know, one of the other things that you mentioned here is what is the response going to be from other companies like DJI? And, and as we said in the news show, you know, we have seen this nature where if a certain competitor comes out with a product, DJI is like literally ready, saddled up to launch a new yeah. product. And it's almost like they're just waiting for the other guys to launch. Um, and we even saw that with the Skydio. You know, now we have the new Mavic 3 and it's one of those really interesting um, features because they're talking about constant A-pass being on. They're talking about about, you know, much better obstacle yeah. avoidance. They're talking about better video. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that they're, they're kind of talking about with this new Mavic 3. Yeah. And it begs the question of, um, you know, what is the response from the market going to be as a whole, not even from the consumer, but from other manufacturers and even potential third party, well, partners. 
like yeah. Pix 4D, you know? I mean, didn't, uh, I believe Skydio pointed it out at some point in one of their uh, video clips that the other drones use about five or six megapixels for obstacle avoidance versus the Skydio 2. I think it's like 45 megapixels that they have available. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't forget they have six 4K cameras with a 200 degree field of view just to scan the surroundings. So um, if DJI is going to launch the Mavic 3 with Active Track 3.0, uh, yeah, they're going to have to step up uh, quite a bit, I think, to get anywhere near Skydio's uh, ability to avoid obstacles and to uh, to self-fly the drone. Um, we know that DJI is aggressive and they're not just going to go away. So uh, we're very excited to see what the Mavic 3 is going to be all about and how well they will fly. Can I just say I'm super fired up to see the drone showdown happen. Oh, hell like yeah. I didn't think it was going to be Skydio and DJI. I mean, we yeah, know yeah. that other new drones are coming out from people who haven't traditionally launched drones. Mm -hmm. I think you should expect to see a new drone from people who um, create certain optics. I think you should expect to see a drone from other people who create a different kind of optics. Um, I think that people should be ready to see new enterprise drone solutions from American manufacturers. Um, and I think that there's a new company coming out of the United Kingdom um, that should be offering uh, something like the M210, but it would have truly interchangeable payloads. You know, yeah. it's not just limited to proprietary uh, camera payloads, and it's not just limited to payloads that work on the SDK, because there's always issues with the SDK, it seems like. You know, the reliability and consistency, mm -hmm. there, there's always issues. So, you know, with that said... Um, I, I don't know. Where do you see the drone wars going? I mean, we've talked about Skydio 2 ramp up to maybe the Skydio 3. Skydio 3 could be Enterprise, maybe. Yeah. DJI is probably going to launch the Mavic 3. I don't think the Mavic 3 is going to be uh, what a lot of people want. I'm just saying that because... Mm -hmm. You know, let's look at other products that have come out. If you promise X and you deliver Y and there's a differentiation and then you come out with another product that says, no, 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 we actually fixed that this time and here it is. It seems like you may have already lost the trust of some of the oh, marketplace as yeah. a whole, right? Yeah, and we've seen that. It's like on, on articles on Drone DJ, we've seen that on our YouTube channel, social media channel, I know from Drone U as well, that people are kind of getting a little fed up with DJI sometimes and a little yeah. tired with DJI and a lot of the promises that are made or accessories that are promised and they're not available initially you need to wait for it so dji is aggressive and they're fast in launching products and that's great but it comes with a downside which is that yeah sometimes you feel like a beta tester or sometimes you wish that you could get the accessories and they're not available yet i think right now with uh, dji and skydio it's like the perfect storm because you have this chinese company which is like the big goliath in the room and you get now this this american startup with a real american drone and some incredible features to see those two companies go head to head uh, i think is amazing in itself but then also yeah hopefully we will get more competition and more drone products out there because we desperately need it. I mean, if you compare the drone world to, let's say, uh, car manufacturers with cars, there's like all these different flavors you can choose from. You can get any kind of car for any kind of purpose. Mm -hmm. When it comes to drones, not quite as much. True. And, you know, we have Parrot, which is a large company, and they have the Anafi, yeah. but the Anafi is just so underpowered. You know, you don't have the 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 typical flight characteristics and control smoothness that you've expected from other drones, it seems extremely underpowered. Um, and it seems like the gimbal just really can't handle when the drone is so underpowered. You know, it's having yeah. to actuate back and forth. It's a great little drone, but it doesn't compete, I think, with the Skydio 2 or the Mavic 2 or the Mavic 3 later. I agree. I agree. But I think that you hit the head uh, with the fact that public safety may ask for a dual sensor. Mm -hmm. So if you have this drone, this actually... Hold on a second. Pump the brakes. This could be th literally the best public safety drone. Why? Two, th two things. If it had a dual sensor, if it had the EO and the thermal sensor, mm -hmm. and it has all the obstacle avoidance, you know, one oh, yeah. of the big things that we're teaching in our public safety class is confined space training. Yeah. That's why we're launching this new cool thing that I'm not going to talk about because you're going to launch it. So that being said, um, this, could, this could really be a public safety powerhouse. If it can oh, yeah. fly through buildings oh yeah we know from uh, from skydo that um with the obstacle avoidance they basically create a three feet uh, parameter around the drone so it can fly safely and stay away from obstacles i know they can bring that down to at least half that so let's say you have about 50 centimeters on all sides around the drone as an air bubble so it will it will fly through doorways probably at that point but it will stay away from the edges uh, by 50 centimeters i mean for confined spaces uh wouldn't that with a thermal camera not be like almost the ideal drone for firemen to 
venture into buildings where you don't want to send a human being in yet. I couldn't agree more, but yeah. let's take it one step further. Could you imagine if the obstacle avoidance cameras could see or see near infrared or um, you know past the spectrum that we could see where they're in short wave infrared, long wave infrared, and they're able to see through smoke? Now you have obstacle avoidance in smoky environments. Let's talk about confined space search and rescue on a whole new level now. You, oh, yeah. I mean, like that would that would revolutionize firefighting. Yeah, and I think in that sense, it makes it makes a lot of sense for Skydio to come up with a drone that's going to allow them to sell in a large volume. It's going to allow them to uh, actually ramp up their production capacity and establish themselves as a real uh, drone manufacturer with a good cash flow coming in and a stable business. And then from there, you can branch off into other directions. Hundred percent. So Haya, let's uh, wrap up this this first episode of Off the Record. What are your predictions? What are we going to see? Drone Wars 2020. What's going to happen? Oh, I think 2020 is going to be a lot more exciting than uh, 2019 has been. I think we're going to see this play out between uh, Skydio and, uh, and DJI. Um, another big one is the remote ID. I mean, if that comes through in 2020, we're probably going to see on the commercial uh, drone applications a lot new uh, new initiatives being deployed. Meaning, uh, you're, so you're saying that because of remote ID, you're going to see a lot of changes in drone manufacturing. I think, I think if remote ID passes, it's going to open up the doors for other ways of using drones. That right now would be possible but simply aren't allowed yet and I think that will be a big breakthrough yeah for sure couldn't agree more I think uh, you know and we're going to talk about and then that in the next episode of off the record we're going to talk about regulatory wise everything the predictions of 2020 what we're going to see so I'm going to stay away from that stuff but I will say you know when it comes to the drone wars I think that we are going to see Skydio rise above DJI on the consumer side I think it's going to take another year, another two years, and they, or maybe at the end of next year, they launch a new Skydio that's got maybe dual sensors. Maybe they launch a mapping Skydio. Maybe they launch the, the Phantom competitor because they're really well positioned to do that. Yeah. I don't think that DJI and Skydio are going to be the only players, though. I think we're going to be... I hope not. Yeah. yeah, I hope not as well. You know, Unique did just launch that new drone uh, with the Leica camera, but man, what a letdown. Sorry, sorry guys at Unique, but you guys really need to listen to your customer base. It's, it's almost pathetic at this point. Um, we can't utilize that drone with that remote that you guys are using like you can't even use that remote and get waivers for like bvlos or you know uh, certain pow coa waivers for flying over people because you i mean there's no forms of redundancy how can i take over the drone in return to home if it's mm. ready to just you know like crash into a tree i'm not trying to bash unique but like guys you, we we really want you in this space we really want to see you do more same oh, with yeah. with 3d robotics which is clear i don't think they're going to be doing anything with drones anytime soon but I think, you know, camera makers are going to be getting in this market. I think sensor makers are going to be getting in this market. And I think you're going to see drones from different parts of the world that you haven't quite seen before. And I think that DJI was its own worst enemy and opened up the floodgates to its competition. Yeah, I mean, I think if you're in that position that DJI has been in, uh, it's, I mean, I'm not saying that they did get lazy, but it's easy to kind of become a little lazy and complacent because you're in a monopoly situation almost. And of course, with the fraud case and the data security issues, as well as the uh, trade war between the US and China. That doesn't uh, help on all fronts. Well, 2019 must have been a tough year for them. Yeah. And I think you see that in the production capacity. I mean, I, I can't imagine that the Phantom line wasn't hurt by that in some uh, shape or form. But that also kind of brings us back to Skydio. I mean, talking about production capacity. I mean, the Skydio first batch was sold out in like a day or so. The second batch was sold out in the next couple of days. Uh, if the Skydio 2 is going to be that amazing drone, is the company Skydio going to be able to keep up and actually produce the numbers that we're going to need? Yeah, no, the very, very, very good questions. Uh, and gosh, there, you know, I, you bring up a really good point is that it's not just DJI and their own worst enemy. There's these environmental factors that have also crept up unknowingly that have exacerbated the issue as a whole. So I think that you, you bring up a, an extremely good point. But I will say, I do think DJI is their own worst enemy. Why do you launch the Osmo Action? Why do you launch DJI Terra? You know, it seems like they focus on a lot of other products this year that have nothing to do with their core audience. DJI Osmo Pockets, mm -hmm. Robomaster. I mean, it's, it's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, there are a lot of cool products, but I think, I mean, we see it in the articles on Drone DJ. Uh, we write about a new product and, hey, let's say it's the Robomaster. And people are like, well, that's great, but where's the new drone? 
Well, that's here, what people care about. Here's the thing. I think what DJI is trying to do is get in the hearts and minds of our young people. And that will be a smart move. Well, look what Apple did. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Anyway, that's yeah. going to do it for this week of Off the Record. Yeah.